we're going to be sliding from the magical scale over across to the cute scale. Sorry, Chris. We are featuring one of the UK's most iconic animal, possibly a nation's favourite, and one that we really like to feature on the watches the red squirrel, absolutely beautiful and of course very cute. Now recent estimates, current estimates actually put this species at about 140,000 of them in the UK. Now that might sound like a lot but compare that to two and a half million grey squirrels which of course are an invasive species introduced from North America and out competing the red squirrels and native red squirrels in most parts of the UK but in Northern Ireland they do have a few strongholds. And researcher Rebecca Sinnott has been studying populations not just in Northern Ireland but also in the Republic. And we caught up with her in an absolutely stunning part of County Armagh called the Ring of Gullion. One of the main struggles that the Reds face across Northern Ireland and uh, the Republic is that we have such fragmented woodland for them. The squirrels don't have natural kind of areas to cross for themselves, so they then become isolated in these little populations. It can lead to a loss of inbreeding, which then can slowly lead to localised extinctions of red squirrels around the island. We need high levels of genetic diversity within populations because it will help keep disease resistance up and keep the squirrel population just healthy. Different methods can be used to survey the squirrels, such as camera traps, but individuals can be hard to distinguish from one another. So Rebecca has been using another method to gain more insight into population numbers and health. So this is where my project kind of gives it a really nice cool twist in that I'll be using hair samples, I can extract DNA from them and I can use this DNA then to identify individuals and then that can give you an accurate number of the amount of individuals in the area that you're studying. This here is a hair tube, uh, so it's just a piece of PVC pipe and then it has one end that's blocked off. So you just attach a little sticky hair patch up to the top of it and then put a bit of base in it. This will then be attached to a tree, the squirrel runs through it to get the base and the sticky patch collects the hair with the squirrel being none the wiser, so it's a very like, non-invasive, non-disturbing approach. Once I have all this data gathered, we'll essentially have like a genetic database of red squirrels around Northern Ireland that we can use the information to for translocation projects within the future. <laughs> so I've got one of those hair tubes, the sampling tubes that she had there, and you can just see that sticky tape on the inside there. That would be an absolute nightmare if I got my hair caught in that for obvious reasons. But that's the point. It's actually a relatively non-invasive way of getting some hair samples from the red squirrel. And they only need about four or five strands of hair to gather enough genetic material to learn loads of information about the individuals. Things like lineage, the family history. This gives us lots of information about the history historic distribution of red squirrels in Northern Ireland, but also how the populations have been moving between areas as well. Another thing that it can tell us is what diseases are present in the population. So things like squirrel pox, but also other diseases that don't show physical traits on symptoms on the outside. But then a really important thing to be able to know is something called inbreeding depression. Now this is when populations get isolated, get cut off, and there's not enough genetic variety to stay healthy. So let's take a look at what Rebecca's research has shown us so far. So there are a few strongholds, isolated populations around Northern Ireland. Now, a conventional survey, all these squirrels would look very much the same. But DNA sampling starts to reveal their DNA, their genetic profiles. And isolated populations like this one, say, would have very similar profiles. So they would be in danger of suffering from inbreeding depression. So we move across to another population over here, and you might expect this one has a different profile. And in fact, it's got a nice, healthy genetic variety in there. So this would be a good candidate to move across, to translocate and start breeding with this population to give them more genetic variety, more genetic vigor. However, it's not as simple as that because the DNA can also tell us whether the squirrels are diseased. Now, we know all about viruses now, don't we? And of course, it wouldn't be a good idea to take a diseased squirrel and introduce it into a healthy population. And we simply would not know that without the DNA sampling. So it's a really amazing technique to start helping us to understand how to bridge these gaps of these 
very unnaturally genetically different populations here, these population islands. And of course, in time, the hope is that these populations will become more connected as their habitats join up again, and then the red squirrels can mingle all by themselves without a helping hand from us.